what we've seen is essentially contracting parties may find it quite uh, impossible as a result of COVID to fulfill their contractual obligations um, in part or at all. So we've seen that the, the impact of COVID-19 has had great, you know, enormous uh, consequences on businesses, on employees, on employers, on life in general. So force majeure is where a distinction needs to be, dr be drawn between, you know, your contra contractual obligations and your statutory obligations. And I'll, for purposes of this discussion, I'll just take you through what this force majeure means, which we've all seen in contracts, which we all have always just, you know, glanced, not all, I have, um, glanced over, because you know what it means, but we've never really applied it. Because um, we've, you know, we sure, surely, you know, we've never had COVID. So there might be um, parties in terms of the, the contractual obligations who aren't able to perform um, and the, they may be with remedy um, if they tap into the force majeure um, uh, principle or the, the, the principle of um, supervening impossibility of performance. So I'll just briefly deal with both of those. So the, the word force majeure is French, not Latin. I actually initially thought it was, it was uh, you know, uh, law typical as all of these Latin phrases, but that's not one of them. It's, it's, it's French, and it literally means um, a superior force. So essentially, it is a, a legal mechanism or defense which may be relied upon by a party who is under a legal obligation to carry out specific performances, but is unable to do so because of an exceptional event or circumstances, which is beyond the control of those parties bearing such legal obligations. So for example, it would typically be a war, a hurricane, a riot, or a pandemic, as we have in this instance. Um, so it's important to note that not all force majeure clauses excuses a party for non-performance entirely, um, but it typically only suspends the, the person for the duration of the force majeure. In this instance, then, um, a party may be, um, the other contracting party may not be entitled to, to call breach or claim damages during the COVID period. And who knows how long that's, you know, how long that's going to be. Um, I heard Ramaphosa, our president, saying last night that we, uh, towards the end of uh, May, we'll probably go to level four, oh, sorry, to level three. Um, that is a good sign, but still, you know, I don't know if it's in level three, level two, level one, you know, who knows how long this um, pandemic's going to uh, um, last. So exactly what constitutes a force majeure event will vary from one agreement to the next, and it needs to be assessed by a case by case basis. The funds, the trustees, the administrators, the employers, you know, various several um, service providers to funds need to go to your actual agreement and determine what your force majeure clause says. Um, but now the question is, what happens if there's no such clause? What happens if the force majeure clause doesn't exist? And... Um, you know, may you then rely on, or, you know, what, what's your options? And the other option um, is what we call the common law doctrine of uh, supervening impossibility of performance. So what that is basically means is um, uh, it's an impossibility will terminate or discharge a party's obligations under an agreement where a vis mayor or a casus fortuitous I don't know how to pronounce that correctly, but these are the Latin terms that are necessary, um, has made the fulfillment of a party's contractual obligation impossible. So in plain terms, simple terms, what that basically means is it's, it's a species of force majeure. It's an event that has made performing impossible. Um, and that impossibility must not have been foreseen. Um, and the courts have emphasized that it's, it's an absolute, you know, you absolutely cannot comply. It's an absolute impossibility, the test for um, using supervening of impossibility of performance. Force majeure might be um, a slighter, um, lighter test to, to apply because you will go to your clause, 
um, and that will set out the, the terms and conditions in relation to that. But if a party is tapping into supervening of impossibility of performance, just note that the test is 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 quite um, strong, and it is that um, it's basically impossible to perform. Now, when when we were asked, when I was asked to to consider whether to um, talk on this topic. Um, I wanted to know, you know, why, why would this be, you know, relevant for, for us at all? Why am I talking to, you know, you guys today? And one of the questions is because, and all of these discussions we've had already, is that employers, um, apart from the fact that they're tapping into their, their rules or applying for rule amendments by the fund not to pay contributions or to suspend contributions, some employers simply cannot pay. They have been locked down, may still be locked down. Um, you know, services aren't delivered. Uh, there's no income. You know, they just simply can't afford it. But they are still legally participants um, of the fund. Can an employer then, say, call upon the defense or the legal mechanism of force majeure not to pay contributions to a fund? Does COVID-19 excuse an employer from not paying contributions, for, for not con uh, paying contributions during this pandemic? You know, it might last six months, it might last a year, you know, we, we simply does not, uh, we don't know. Or um, can an employer tap into the, the supervening of, you know, it's basically impossible to perform the, the, that doctrine. Now, I've, it's, a, it's a tricky question, and I think, um, you know, if you, if you analyze force majeure, it typically relates to contractual obligations. Now, an employer, um, its obligations usually stems from three things. It's as a in an umbrella fund, for example, you would be a participant. You would have your participation agreement with the fund, um, which would typically also say, you know, contributions are due within the seven seven days of the month it was due. You would also have the rules of the fund that would also then say, you know, the employer must pay the contributions within a specific period of time. And then we have Section 13A of the Pension Funds Act that requires that contributions need to be paid um, on these dates and employer schedules need to be submitted as well. Now, um, I think you can, an employer cannot use uh, force majeure as um, a, an excuse or as a defense for not paying contributions. And why I say so um, is because it is typically, it relates to your contractual obligations. Um, there's other remedies available to the employer, um, but I don't think you the, the, the right one would necessarily be to tap into the force majeure um, as, the, as the defense. The, the other um, defense I think may be um, relevant to an employer is what we call, and again, I need to read the, 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 the Latin here, is the legal maximus, which is called um, lex non cog. I'm, I'm actually not even going to try and pr uh, pronounce it. It essentially just means, and I can send it to everybody if, if you want, that there's, a, there's a maxim in our law that says if something has happened um, where it's impossible to perform, then the law, if there's a statute that requires an employer, for example, to pay contributions, and the employer is in a position where it cannot comply with statute, not contract, statute 13A, then um, the law will take, will not be as harsh on, on the, the, the person or on the employer not being able to pay contributions, provided that you, you know, it was unforeseen um, and it's not something that's done malicious. So I don't think, what I'm not saying is that employers can now go and tap into the Lex non cogit ad impossibilia um, uh, for, for non payment of contributions. I just simply think that it needs to be um, assessed and on a case by case basis, but the, the employers aren't without remedy because, no, in my view, nobody would have foreseen uh, the, the, the pandemic. Yes, Section 13 has criminal liability attached to it. Yes, rules need to be amended. Um, if it doesn't allow for the suspension. And yes, the, the FECA needs to um, approve the rules uh, prior to implementation. 
But if I were a judge, you know, before the courts, I think this, this, it's not as simply as clear cut just to say you haven't paid and you can't afford. It needs to be assessed on a case by case basis. And I think the courts may be lenient, um, you know, where, where an employer, for example, uh, uh, has not complied um, with its obligations. Then uh, pl employers aside, let's think about administrators. There's several uh, service level agreements or uh, administrators have their, their set SLAs with their funds. Um, and the funds have SLAs with various service, other service providers. What happens now if a administrator cannot pay a, a claim uh, within a certain period? What happens if the administrator doesn't even receive the claim um, because we were all, you know, asked basically to go on lockdown um, very quickly, and uh, lots of people are working remotely, lots of people didn't have laptops, um, or it might have taken the administrator some time to, to, to put the necessary infrastructure um, uh, at home uh, in order for the administrator to do its job. So I think in those instances where the SLA, for example, says an, a claim had to be paid within seven days or you know, whatever your obligations may, may be under that admin agreement. I think in those instances, force majeure may be used as, as, a, as a, um, an excuse or a legal defense for not complying strictly with your, your obligations set out in that uh, agreement. Now, again, with all of these things, it's just important to remember that it is the, the excuse for the time being not to be able to comply strictly with your obligations. It does not necessarily mean that you are not entitled, that you, you don't have to perform ever at all. It is, um, you know, mitigating factors need to be put in place and the performance would be suspended for this, this period. Alternatively, you know, the parties would need to agree to, to amend the agreement or to amend the, the performance requirements or the dates uh, within which an uh, administrator, for example, needs to um, uh, do, you know, to uh, comply with its obligations.